It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Boxroad. Delighted to be joined by 27-year-old <laughs> Terry Harper straight after a training session. Yeah, hi. How are you doing? It's, um, you've just done, what, six, seven, eight rounds? Eight, eight twos, so just really working on um, just being relentless, really. We're, we're young Connor's little flyweight. Um, it's like we always say he's like a little like a little wasp who's just in and out and picking shots that you never thought you'd get it with and it's it's just good for uh, just getting that work in really. Good stuff. Um, obviously, before we talk about the boxing, boring side of things, you know, how have you been? I was looking earlier. You've not done any interviews for months. What have you been up to? Just um, obviously training. Um, just enjoying life really. I like I, like, I had a, few, a little bit of a switch off and a few holidays and. Just back in the gym now, big fights announced, so um, this is where I have to come back to work and start doing interviews again. Is it America you went? I think you went to America, didn't you, last time we spoke? Last year, yeah, uh, LA and just LA and Vegas. How was that? I think we was joking about the zombies in LA. Did did you meet any? Oh, honestly, it's it's crazy, really, what what you see on TV and then when you go in real life. Um, I can say it was an eye opener, good experience, but Vegas was like a different, completely different world. Crazy. What was your favourite place in the States? Because I know you've been in New York, New York as well. Yeah, uh, I'd definitely say LA. LA, yeah. Good stuff, man. Let's let's talk about the boxing, uh, Terry. Big, big fight announced in the last few weeks. Yourself and Sandy Ryan, all domestic British uh, dust-up. A uh, lot of people saying it's 50-50. Um, is, is there, are you guys friends? You know, what's, uh, how's this fight come about? Uh, I just think it's, it's a great fight. Um, I know Matchroom, uh, Eddie and that were doing interviews, I think late last year, um, starting to plant seed of that. And uh, I spoke with Andrew saying, I th feel like they're gonna push for that fight. And I said to Andrew, good, cause it, it's the fight I want. And I feel like it's a fight that's gonna um, really give me that fire and and push on to, to have a good performance. Because I feel like since, um, since probably my fight with, I feel like my last best performance was against Jonas and since then um, obviously I had the, the fight with Flanders, broke my hand, uh, came back to fight uh, Alicia, knocked out, then I just was rebuilding myself back then with Abel and Ada um, and then obviously jumped up all them weights to fight uh, Hannah Rankin. As good as it was to win a world title, I, I never came away from any of them fights feeling satisfied with my performance so I feel like I'm due a good win and a good performance, and I feel like this is what this is what it's gonna this is gonna bring best version out of me. Um, What's um, the thing with you and San Diego guys friends? Is there some rivalry, or is there any any needle or anything like that? No, no, not not that I know from my half. Um, obviously, we've done bits of sparring and stuff. I think she's a she's a great fighter, and um, I am a big fan of Sandy's. So um, honestly, it's just massive respect to her for giving me the opportunity, and I think it's it's a great fight, and it's great for British boxing fans. Obviously, you're both world champions. You know, how did it come to the conclusion that you was going to fight for her belt and she was going to fight for your belt? Um, I don't know. Just matchroom. Um, I know uh, Andrew's let matchroom know that I, I wanted to come back down weight to more natural weight, and um, this opportunity came up, and Sandy's put her belt on the line. So, yeah. That let, gives you the opportunity to become a three weight world champion. Yeah, um, I, I don't, I don't, I think it's a bit first female to be three weight world champion, but um, like from the UK, and um, it's it's a not lots of pressure, but it's it's a great um, incentive. Um, I'm on, can we do that again? I'm just just <laughs> I'm actually gonna keep this in. Just just spit it out. I know you've just done eight rounds of sparring. You obviously you, you, just for the record, your speech isn't slid. You just uh, dry mouth. You got water here as well. Do you know what? It's because I'm at a swinger, not doing interviews. That's what I get for riding away for, for months, months on end. Yeah. And I, I've been handing you for months, uh, weeks, should I say? Um, I spoke to Clifton Mitchell the other day, and he basically said. Um, he was there, you guys have done 60 odd rounds, obviously he's, he's not, not training Sandy anymore, but he said to me, from what he saw in the spas, it's never a 50-50 fight and he, he sees Sandy beating you. So obviously based on that, I want to ask you, you know, what confidence have you took from them spas uh, that you feel like you know, you're going to win this fight? Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember, obviously, 
One thing I always lack was confidence, self confidence, and and believing in my ability. And I remember um, when Clifton first found and and asked for sparring, I was like, shit, like sparring Sandy Ryan. Like I looked up to her like she was this like crazy like like superhuman and. Um, and then obviously when when I sparred her, like I can remember getting out of the ring and thought, like I can I can get in the ring with these girls and hold my own. And I feel like from from that moment is when I really started to get my self belief. So from them spars is when I started to get my my confidence. And them spars have been great rounds for Sandy, and uh, Sandy knows that. Okay, um, I actually genuinely think it's a really really good fight, and. Uh, I know what Clifton's saying, it's not 50-50, but you know, it's got to be 50-50. Both of you have only got one loss each. Um, obviously, you've done more rounds, you've had more fights, but obviously she's got more of an extensive amateur uh, career. So uh, who kind of goes into this fight with better, I don't know, better maybe schooling, experience? Does that count? Uh, amateurs and pros, completely different game. Um, so I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not thinking too much on that. I think, I think this fight's... Whoever's going into it, we're most mentally prepared, I think. That's what, that's what I believe. Okay. Um, obviously, a lot of people have always like said, you know, because you get critics, and uh, one of the things people criticise you over is they say, oh, she's moved up weight, you know, to get easier world title fights and all that kind of stuff. So now, you know, they can't say anything now because you're going to welterweight and you're going straight into a, a big, big fight. And obviously, if you're successful, am, am I right in saying that you eyeing up people like Chantel Cameron, Katie Taylor, Caroline Dubois? Because there's some huge domestic fights there if you're going to stay around. Yeah, I feel like I've done I've done everything now as, as a professional. And um, like I said, I got these world title fights. And when I when I fought Hannah Rankin for, to become two, two weight, two time world champion, I came away from that fight still disappointed because um, it's not the performance that I, I know I, I've got inside me, so I feel like this fight now is is setting it up, and uh, it's one where I can really go out there and show everyone. Tasha Jonas, um, you know, it's a fight that a lot of people hoped the, the rematch would happen, but it doesn't look like it's probably ever going to happen. But um, what did you make of her fight with uh, Michaela Mayer? Great fight. Um, I, I think first two rounds, Jonas started so well, uh, using a feet, making Mayer fall short. I think Mayer struggled with. Like obviously the southpaw stance to begin with, and um, but from th like after the two rounds, I feel like Jonas really faded, and Mayo really came on strong and got herself into the fight and pushing, obviously pushing Jonas back. And I thought at one point the fight was going to get stopped. So, who did you think won, and did you score it? Um, I, I, I believe Mayo won, hundred percent. Yeah, I feel I feel a bit good for Mayo to be fair. I feel like she's fallen short a few times and been robbed uh, of some good wins. Uh, yeah, another ex-opponent, Alicia Bumgardner. I don't know if you've been keeping up to date with her career so far. Have you ever seen what's going on? Uh, bits and bobs, but I'm not. I'm not too. I've been doing my research or anything like that. Yeah, just for the record, you're, you're a casual boxing fan, as he just told me. You don't really keep up to date with stuff. But Alicia recently got cleared by the WBC for intentionally taking uh, performance-enhancing drugs. I uh, just want to get your opinion on that. Uh, obviously, we still don't know whether she's allowed to fight or cleared to fight. Uh, it's still kind of up in the air. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not really my business, is it, to get involved in. And um, hopefully she can she get fully cleared and... Um, like I said before, I'm a big fan of Alicia and I think she's got a great boxing style and it'd be great to see her back out once once her name's cleared. She's also suggested that she's looking to move up weight divisions and she's got some beef going on with Calista Shields. Um, have you seen that? Yeah, mad. I saw the uh, the plane footage video. That, that made me have a laugh. That's cool, yeah. If she, obviously, you've done it. You're from the same weight division. You've come up three, four weight divisions, so there's a good chance she could do the same. So uh, if that happens, you give her a chance against Calista Shields? Give Alyssa a chance against Clarissa. Uh, I feel like it's too big of a jump. Yeah, uh, she's only Alyssa's only. She's a lot smaller, and um, obviously I can't really say much because I jumped up five minute four weights, whatever. But um, I feel like the size difference would be too much. And any, uh, if if you got the opportunity, would you like to uh, rematch Alicia Baumgartner if she comes up, you know, to your sort of weight division? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like. We all have bad days in office, and that fucking probably one of my worst ones ever. But um, you can only like it'd be it'd be a great fight for me to go out there mentally and um, put my wrongs right. I, f I feel like I've I've learned a lot from that fight, and kind of like I said before, it's a blessing in disguise. It let me come away and reevaluate things and change personal life and boxing stuff. And um, it'd be great to to see how much I've progressed f since that fight. 
Well, you, you, I don't think you should knock yourself back because you should give yourself credit because that knockout and sometimes people that can mentally damage fighters but you've come back had big fights and now you're stepping into another big fight and you, you're still a world champion so you've obviously succeeded in life so I think you need to give yourself a bit of a pat on the back because getting stopped like that and coming back and doing what you've done uh, you know that deserves some credit. Yeah definitely I think I think the main thing I learned from from that defeat while life goes on and boxing is just it's, it's my hobby and it's what I enjoy to do so um, remembering that I still got no matter what happens, I still I could walk away from boxing. I've got all the, my loved ones and everyone around me, and um, I think that was just nice reassurance for me to see. So now I, I come to boxing with, without the pressure, and I know I can I can actually enjoy it. Yeah, I tell you what, I picked up on that. You don't want to speak to female fighters. I reckon female fighters are more harsh on themselves from losses. Uh, I think I think I kind of picked that up. Would you agree? I think it's just females in general. <laughs> we're, we're harsh on ourselves with a lot of things, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I still say like I'm a biggest critic, and um, like I'll watch my spy back later, and I'll, I'll be just looking at everything that I've done wrong, or um, if I watch old fights, I just, I'm just picking up negatives. So uh, I've started reading recently, and I've really been enjoying that, and really just uh, looking at um, understanding the human brain and stuff, and why why we think things and why we get reactions, we emotions, and everything like that. And I think it's it's great to read and just educate ourselves and. Um, I should have started reading sooner because it, it relaxes me and just, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm in a calm, positive place, really. Well, that's good to see, and I'll, I'll let you uh, get gone now, but I think I'd uh, just want to say it's, in, it's good to see that. I mean, I've seen your journey from Steffi shouting from the rooftops, 22-year-old world champion, 22-year-old, and now you're 27. So it's amazing to see what you've done in five years, and uh, obviously you've made money, you've become a world champion, and now in a big domestic fight. Uh, obviously, I know both of you quite well, so, you know, may the best lady win. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Listen, I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 